Fishing with live bait for monster fish. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, we got a shark, boys. Oh my gosh. Let's go, baby. Come on. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, we got it. I watched him on the live scope and it's a giant. Unlike our other live bait videos, we're gonna be fishing in both saltwater and freshwater locations. Our goal today is to see how many different species we can catch. But the first step to this process is to catch some bait. It's time to get us some live bait, boys. We are out in the fresh water today. Fletcher is on a kayak right now in salt water. But the first thing that we need to do right now is get as much live bait as possible. And then after this, we're gonna be hunting some really big bass with live bluegill. And then after that, we're gonna go after some monster catfish at some of the marina docks. But let's go ahead and dive into this and rig up everything we need to catch our bait. And then we're gonna head out to some other spots and catch some big fish. Before we get deeper into this video, only 27% of you all watching these videos are actually subscribed. So if you could take the time, hit the subscribe button, it really helps the channel. I'd appreciate it. Well, here we are guys on the South Carolina coast and we are about to do some live bait salt water fishing. The first thing we gotta do is catch some bait. So without further ado guys, I'm gonna put this fishing kayak in drive and we're gonna head on out of here and we are gonna go catch some bait. So first things first, we just got one of these foam live bait bait buckets. And we actually have one of these aerators, just a regular bubble box. So we're gonna go ahead and get water in this before we even start rigging up. Just enough to keep them fish alive. Cause we are actually gonna be toting this bait to some other lakes and ponds right after we catch them. Boom, turn that puppy on. And as you guys can tell right there in the water, it's keeping it all oxygenated for us. So we got that good to go. Now our next step is to rig up. So I have my Kicking Their Bass TV x Loose combo. This is actually one of the spinning setups. If you guys want to check them out, you can get them on kickingtheirbass.com. Link will be down below. I appreciate anybody and everybody who supports the brand. And it is fishing season, guys. You know, we're heading into the end of summer now and we're getting into the fall. The fishing's going to be getting really good. So make sure you go get yourself a combo start catching some big fish so this is a pretty cool little kayak here guys i have only fished off of these one time in my entire life as far as these pedal drive kayaks go there's actually a rudder under here and i can turn this thing with the things to my left and my right just by turning it with my hand which makes for a nice hand-free fishing experience so fletcher's actually going to be cast netting for his live bait since he's in salt water but we're going with a pretty traditional method we got a rod, a bobber, and a hook. Very simple. And you guys are probably asking, Noah, you know, what are you gonna use for this? I wanted to use some live worms, but sadly it's been super dry and I couldn't get any live worms. So to at least get our live bait today that we're gonna be using for the big fish, I just have a can of biscuit dough. And you guys are probably saying, Noah, why are you using biscuit dough? Well, when it comes to catching bluegill, a lot of people are gonna use bread. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why we use biscuit dough. Do you see how doughy this is? and how good this stays in form. That is not gonna fall off your hook. When I was a younger kid fishing off the docks for big bluegill, this was my go-to bait. And I'm telling you, it is by far the best bait if you guys are just wanting to catch some bluegill. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start tying on. We're gonna get us just a regular small panfish hook right there. And as you guys can tell, it's got a long shank on it. And one thing that we're gonna do before we add the bobber, we're actually gonna add a split shot, which is just a little weight. We honestly don't even need it. For some reason, it's just such a habit to add a split shot that I'm just gonna do it. Boom, there we go. So we got our hook, we got our split shot. We got a bunch of lead on my fingers, man. Them weights are shedding, shedding on me. And that right there is your basic brim rig. You know, small hook, little split shot, got a bobber up top. All we're gonna do is just get a little tiny piece, man. We're not looking for any like massive, massive bluegill. We gonna get some, you know, fair medium sized ones. Not too big, not too small. Gotta get used to standing on this thing. It's stable, stable enough to cast. Just a little wobbly. We're gonna wanna fill our live bait bucket up. So if we do catch something, I can swiftly put them in there. And then I got a little rope to tie that off with. All right, so without further ado, let's give her a flip, man. There should be a bunch of bluegill in this pond. That's why I came out here in particular. Yep, just like that. Oh my gosh, we got, oh, he came off. That was the smallest bluegill I've seen. He's honestly too small for bait. I mean, we could have used him, but he was, dude, that fish was tiny. 
We want them a little bigger than that, man. We're gonna be going for some big bass here in a little bit. And we got a fun little inner challenge going on between us and Fletcher. We're trying to see who can catch the most species, the most fish, and also the biggest fish of the day. Saltwater definitely has more species, but it's gonna be fun to see what he comes up with. Let's see if we can get this fish. Oh my gosh, dude. These fish are biting so fast and he came off again. I couldn't even grip my dang reel. That one was actually perfect too, man. I don't think we're gonna have trouble getting bait. This has been a uh, problem in the past where it takes us too long to get bait today. That is not gonna be the case. I managed to safely cast it without throwing myself out of the boat. It's a good start. Maybe not into the grass would probably be a good idea. Did we get anything? Oh yeah, let's go boys. Oh yeah, we got ourselves a nice little live minnow. Where are you at? What's, what did we catch? Oh, it's a little jack. We got a baby jack raval. Take a look at this. Now that is a premium bait. Dying boys. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting to catch. So this fish right here, guys, is actually a Jack Creval. It's a baby. These things get up to like 50 pounds, but I feel like this could be a really cool bait to throw with it being a baby. I feel like this thing could get absolutely smoked. So I'm gonna throw that into the bucket. That is our first fish of the day and technically our first species. I think me and Noah agreed to not count the cast net species. So I know that's one of the things that we're going for here, but maybe we can use him to catch either a bigger Jack Ravel or a shark or a redfish. I mean, there's a lot of things that might eat that little guy. Okay, Bluegill, I'm done with your crap, man. I just need to catch y'all so we can go catch some big fish. There we go. That is the tiniest Bluegill. That's what I'm saying, man. That's, is that bass candy or is that too small? So I almost feel like that size bluegill is a little too small for what we're looking for. I think it could work, but we want, want some a little bit bigger. At least we got our first fish. Got that knocked off the list. So here's my popping core rig. I'm gonna give this thing a snip, a snippy snip, and we're gonna rig this thing right on there. Thankfully, I already have my hook tied on the other end like so. Let's get our bait out and we're gonna put him on this little circle hook. We're gonna stick this right through his little nostril here like so sorry about that bucko but that that is looking like it's gonna get crushed <laughs> that, that is some premium bait i have a i have a hard time believing that we're not gonna get bit on that today i'm just gonna let some line out and let this get a little bit away from the kayak we're just gonna let that thing float behind me there we go uh, he's not bad he is not bad by any means. I actually think we're gonna add him to the box. He's a little smaller than what I'd like, but that is uh, our first bait fish. Yeah, he's a little smaller, but we're gonna put him in there anyways. If we wanna take him out in a little bit, we can. I kinda like him bigger too, cause they're more active. Oh my gosh, he's freaking out. Speaking of activity, he's going crazy. Oh, that's better. That's a little better. That's bass candy. I still want to get some a little bigger than that. But that one, that's a lot. See, that's a lot better than what we just got. A little, just slightly bigger. There we go. All right, we're on a roll now. Wonder how it's going for Noah over there on his end in the fresh water. I know he knows a lot more what he's doing today than I am. I'm, uh, I'm definitely on the more challenging side of things in regards to both of our skill sets. I think you could definitely catch more fish, more species, and bigger fish out here if you knew what you were doing. But the problem is, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see if I can just get him to eat the hook. Oh my gosh, dude. I've never seen anything like this. We found the mother load. Oh yeah, dude. Talk about candy, bro. That one's so perfect. Come here, Eugene. Get out of there. Oh my gosh. We might have, we might be without a bait fish here, guys. Ah, shucks. No. <laughs> it snapped off. Well, I guess we can just put this up for now until we catch some more bait because we're fresh out of bait and it's a live bait challenge. So I gotta go catch some more. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah. That's our biggest one today, man. Look how fat that one is. That is getting a monster today. Not only is this bluegill just a lot bigger, 
it is just fat as can be. Look at that beautiful bluegill. Finally a good size one. Please, just get me one. Just one. Something to start with. Oh, oh, I think we got a lot. I feel the, I feel the net shaking. I feel the net shaking. Let's go! <laughs> Not mullet, but we got man havens. I think that's how you pronounce them. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, and we got a mullet. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I needed that so bad. All right, that's, a, that's our premium bait right here. I need a bucket full of that size mullet that I caught. If I could get... If I can get 10 of those, we're in great shape. I feel like really confident just going out the fish and I could just be done with catching bait unless we just happen to go through all of those. I mean, that's, that is the money size bait. All right, guys. Well, we just continue to catch baby bluegill like that and that is just not what we want. I don't want them that small. I want them a little bit bigger than that. So what we're gonna do is actually go to the bass lake that we're gonna fish the live bluegill at and see if we can catch some bigger ones over there. We already have like five in the box. So that gives us a good starting point. I would like to have probably at least eight bluegill. Yeah, we got, I think we got six in there. The five or six, no, we got six. One of those is huge, man. We got a couple like perfect size. We got one big one and a couple other small ones. All right, let's go ahead and pack up and go catch some of these big fish. Now we're talking, we got a few mullet. My chest GoPro just died right as I was about to take that cast. So there we go. Got what we were looking for, guys. Another little mullet, perfect bait size. Go ahead and stick that one in the bucket as well. I think we got three or four in that cast, but my, my mullets fell into, into my pedal drive right here and they're just swimming around in that water. It's almost like a, an extra, extra live well. All right, boys, we made it to the lake. We got our boat right here. Just put a couple rods in here that we can use. And uh, we just gotta get the other tackle in there. We have some other hooks. We got pliers, we got scissors. We're gonna need that in the boat. The big thing and the most important thing we're gonna need is this live bait right here. We're gonna need our live bait. Let's check on these puppies. Okay. Yeah, they're doing all right. It went on like a 20 minute drive. I was a little worried, but honestly the bucket didn't move around too much. We're actually gonna set this aside and we're gonna get this boat off the trailer real quick. Then we can put them in there. It's finally time to catch some of these big fish. We were fishing for bluegill way too long, man. I'm ready to get something that's gonna tug. Give us a big old pond monster. I'm curious to see what Fletcher has been doing, man. If he's got him some big old saltwater fish. go son it is time to do some fishing boys i think i'm gonna make a little journey across the river here and go to all these docks i feel like just targeting that structure has got to be it's got to lead to something i mean am i right or am i right i love structure you love structure we all love structure all right guys first things first we need to rig up a rod for these live bluegills. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this off. Obviously we're not throwing this thing today. And uh, just put a basic bobber rig on. So I've done a lot of uh, bluegill rigs in the past and I just seem to have the most success with the bobber rig. I've done some free lines that have been all right. You know, I've caught some fish on it, but I feel like I have the most luck when I'm fishing with bluegill for bass when it's on a bobber. So. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. And uh, you guys are going to be surprised with the hook that I'm gonna put on here. Over my last few times fishing with live bluegill, I've actually just used a standard extra wide gap hook that I would use on a Texas rig. And my hookup ratio guys, let me just tell you, has been so much better. I do not know why. And you guys are probably saying, no, that's wrong. I, I don't really care to be honest because at the end of the day, I have landed almost every fish that has bit my bluegill with the extra wide gap. So that is just what we're going with guys. And then we're gonna get one of these bigger bobbers and we're gonna set it about a foot and a half up the line. That's usually a good zone. A foot to a foot and a half is what I like for the bobber. So we got a big bobber, extra wide gap hook. And then here in a moment, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna rig this bluegill on here. But first we're gonna get out to one of these spots I'm going to use my graph and scan some of these holes offshore. Let's see if we can spot some of these bass. So I'm not really 
sure what I'm doing here, guys. We're just kind of just flipping these docks. I mean, they're really, really deep. This is like a lot deeper than I'm comfortable fishing, uh, like relative to bass fishing, which is my background for those that don't know. You know, a bass fishing dock, we're looking, you know, we're looking at 10 to five feet. This is, this is super, super deep, like super, super, super deep. Coming up on our next dock right here. This one's a little bit shorter. So hopefully it's not as deep. I don't know if that increases or decreases our chances. Definitely a lot shallower, way shallower. All right, boys and girls, we're gonna cut off the aerator just so it's not buzzing in our ear. So with our bluegill selection right now, we're not gonna choose the biggest one quite yet. We're gonna get us just a good, fair size, healthy bluegill. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's more of on the small end. And what I like to do, I've seen a lot of people, you know, hook it through the lip, which is honestly a bad idea because when these bass swallow the bluegill, they swallow them head first. If you hook it in the tail, it can be a decent spot. But I love, you know, all of recently, I've been hooking it right here. You just gotta be careful that you don't get it on their lateral line because you'll trigger a nerve. But right there above that top fin, the perfect spot see how much activity he still has so when we throw this guy in the water he's going to still have a lot of movement you can see him kicking there when you when you hook him in the tail they're going to have a hard time swimming so i think this is the perfect spot that's usually just where i like to hook the bluegill just gives them the most movement they can swim more naturally and uh, usually the hookups on the bass is pretty good so coming up right here we got this big old lay down that goes pretty much from I'd say about 20 foot in front of us all the way to the bank. And there's also that big flat with a bunch of rocks on there as well. So we're going to cast this out just like that and kind of let that bluegill just roam around. You can see how he's going crazy right now. And that bobber is going to be moving. This bluegill is a little smaller, so he's not going to have a ton of movement, but he should have enough to attract a big bass. Make sure I drag set here. Loosen this puppy up. By the way, this is my Kicking Their Bass TVX Loose Baitcaster. If you want to check this one out as well, it's on kickingtheirbass.com. Same website as the spinning combo. But now, this is uh, live bait fishing, guys. We're just going to sit and wait. Kind of let our bluegill just roam around out there and stay in the strike zone, which is right up about 20 foot from the boat. And uh, it's just a waiting game. Oh, oh, there's a shark behind me. There's a shark. There's a shark literally behind the boat. Behind the boat. Hold on, hold on. He's literally right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Literally wait for this. Wait for this, guys. He like, I don't know if he saw my bait box. He was like following that. One second. What the heck? What the heck? Oh, come on, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, he just ate it. He just ate it. Ate it, he ate it, he ate it, he ate it, he ate it. He ate it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Fish on. <laughs> I think it's a little black tip. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if I came equipped with what I need to get, to get this guy off the hook. Oh, we got a shark, boys. Oh my gosh. Definitely a black tip. Did y'all see him sky? No. Oh, he clipped me. He clipped me. Oh my gosh. I hope I caught that on the GoPro on the front. That shark literally just jumped out of the thing and he just cut me clean. No. I, I, need, I need heavier line. That was sick though. I literally look over my shoulder and sure enough, there's a small shark about, I don't know, yay big, just sniffing my bait bucket. Oh, dude. Oh, we got it. I watched him on the live scope and it's a giant. It's a giant. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see my bobber go down, dude. I watched it on the graph. Holy cow, boys, we got a giant on. We got an absolute monster. Got a monster on the giant live beat. Come on, baby. Stay pinned for me. Stay pinned. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh, this is a giant bass. Come on. Oh, dude, she's so big. Pulling drag and everything, dude. Until you see this giant. Look at that big old girl. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I saw her on the live scope eat that thing. Oh gosh. Come here, baby. I'm trying to tire her out. I think she's got the hook pretty good. Oh yeah, it's right there in the side of her mouth. 
Push that seat back. Oh my gosh, come here, come here, baby. Oh my gosh, dude. That is an absolute freaking monster, baby. On the live bluegill. We have been waiting so long for a bite. We just caught an absolute tank, dude. That's an easy four and a half pounder. Holy cow. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get to see her, you know, eat the bluegill. Like, see my bobber go down, man. I was just not paying attention. But let's go, son. That is live bait fishing for you. You just gotta patiently wait. And we just got rewarded with an absolute monster, dude. Let's go, son. Let's give this girl a wait. She's gotta be, oh my gosh, she's almost five and a half. 5.26, man. Let's freaking go, baby. That is what we're talking about, live bait fishing. And I'll tell you right now, son, there's some bigger ones in here ready to be caught. Look at that fat belly. Oh, man. Thank you so much, baby. We're going to get this beautiful girl back in the water. And we're going to see if we can get one even bigger than that. That was so cool watching her eat that thing on the graph. There she goes. Let's go, son. Come on. I actually saw the bobber four foot under the water, and I'm like, how in the world is the bobber that far down? I'll look up. The bobber's absolutely gone. Holy cow. And I'll tell you, boys, there's a lot more fish out here. I think we're in the perfect spot. Oh, what I do to have a bite of right about now? That would just be splendid, folks. I am on the struggle bus. I don't know how it's going for Noah on his end, uh, but I would imagine he's probably smoking them with some live bluegill right about now. Your boy is after something bigger and better, whether that's a shark or something else. I just, I just want to get something in this kayak that, you know, gets my adrenaline pumping. You know what I'm saying? And so far that just quite hasn't happened yet. We had a, a little moment. I got a little dopamine hit from that shark was super cool. But outside of that, it has been a little dormant on my end. I'm hoping these final game plan change decisions at the, the last little hour bit we have left make a difference for me. I'm gonna get up in this shallow grass, see if we can't make it happen. All right, boys and girls, it is time to get old big boy. We ain't playing around no more, man. We are not playing around. No more big boys been so active today. And it is time to get him on the hook and try to catch an absolute monster. That is a big bait right there, man. Should be able to catch an absolute behemoth on that live bait. Oh, another little shark, another little shark, another little shark, another little shark. Hold on, hold on. Hold on one second, guys. I literally just saw another small shark. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, he's going for it. Come on. Oh, he got it, he got it, he got it, he got it, he got it. Stay on, stay on, stay on this time. We got a shark, boys. We got a shark. Don't cut my line. <laughs> oh my gosh, out the middle of the channel. No! I need leader line. Oh my gosh, dude. They just keep trailing up on my bait bucket. That's the trick to catching sharks is drag some bait around in a bucket and they're going to come find you. What in the actual heck? Dude, absolute toads along this bank, man. I'm telling you. Just got to eat. That's wind blowing right through this spot. Just setting these fish up perfectly. I got him. Hey, we're gonna let him eat it. We're gonna let him eat it a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's running like crazy. Oh yeah. There we go, baby. There we go, on the giant bluegill. We got him on the giant bluegill and we we're free lining it. Oh gosh, this is another big one, dude. Oh, he's pulling Jack. Stay pinned, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, he flew the bluegill. Oh my gosh, the bluegill's still alive too. He just swam off. This is not as big as our first one. 
A two and a half pound bass ate the giant bluegill, dude. That's insane. I mean, that's probably close to a three pounder. I saw a bunch of good fish along that bank and they just weren't eating it. And I dropped that one down and I just felt straight pressure, dude. Dude, that is just sick, man. And I'll tell you guys, those extra wide gap hooks have been doing this trick. So that's our second bass on live bait today. One on free line, which was this one. The other one on a bobber. Thank you, baby. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And the bluegill actually got to swim away <laughs> and he was just perfectly fine. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm about done fishing this lake, but I wanna try and go catch some big old catfish. So we're gonna move to a new spot right now and see if we can get some big old kitty cats. I really feel like with the time I have left, I might be able to make a last ditch effort and run and get this kayak out of the water and then hop in my car and skedaddle all the way down to this one dock that I feel like I have some confidence trying to catch some fish on. I, I'm just not having any luck trying to do what I'm doing right now. And I feel like, you know, I should put all my eggs in one basket and go for broke. In an area I feel like I might be able to catch a fish in 10 minutes or so. Once I get there, let me uh, get this bait free and we're gonna skedaddle back to the dock. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gents, we are out at a new spot now. Not only can we catch catfish here, we can catch some big bass and also some pretty large bluegills. So we got three rods right here. We got a bluegill rig on. We have the bass rig on. We just caught those two big ones on. And then we have a catfish rig right here. So my plan is to pretty much put out some cut bait for some catfish. And in the meantime, while we're waiting on them to bite, I'm gonna see if I can catch some more live bluegill. We're gonna flop it on the hook and cast it out here in the middle and see if we can catch another big bass. We got two pretty good ones at the last spot, but there's some even bigger fish in this pond. So let's get after it. All right, so we have all our tools. We got our pliers, scissors. We got some grippers if we need them. And then we got our biscuit dough for more live bait and a fillet knife. So in here, we actually have three bluegill that passed away. Those are the ones that we actually fished with. And they just got really lethargic. So instead of just wasting the bait, we are actually gonna cut it up for some catfish bait. So this is what I usually do. I'm not gonna show this, but I either just cut them straight in half if they're small ones, or I can cut them into three different pieces. Catfish love stinky stuff, any meat, any guts. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good cut bait for uh, catfish. So the body piece of the bluegill is usually my favorite. Um, it just has like all the juices all the juices that the catfish like, man, all the guts, all the nasty stuff. So I just hook it on right there and that's just a regular straight shank hook, nothing crazy. We have it on like a Carolina rig with an egg sinker. And as you can tell, see all them guts falling out, man. This spot is pretty deep right off the end of this dock and there's some catfish that usually go up in here. So all I'm gonna do is just pretty much sink this thing right to the bottom there, just like that. And I'm actually gonna lean my rod right up against this light right here this power box just like that and while we just let that catfish rod sit there we're gonna get some biscuit dough put it on the uh, brim rig and we're gonna see if we can catch another bluegill and then what i'm gonna do is cast out the live bluegill right out here in the middle and uh see if we can catch us another big bass we made it folks just in time oh my gosh we got a little bit of daylight left to fish, and I feel like we can get the job done here. Just maybe if we get the work here quick, I'm just gonna be relying on this cast net job to go crazy good for me, to be completely honest. But this has been a very productive spot for the cast net for me in the past, so I feel good about it. One cast could be all it takes. <laughs> My first cast off the dock. Last time I was out here, I caught a whole net full of shrimp and mullet. Like literally way more than what it took me an hour to get today. Still no bites on the biscuit dough, man. That other pond that we were at earlier was just electric, dude. That place was prime for some bluegill. Oh yeah, what do we get there? Pinfish. <laughs> okay, that's something we could throw on, I guess. I don't, we'll throw it on there. I don't know what else, what else to do, but we got a bait. Not ideal, but it's something. Hold on. I don't know, man. That kind of looked like a fish was running with it right there. I swear it was more to the left. Oh, yeah, we do have one. We do have one. We got one on. Let's go, baby. Come on. 
Oh yeah, let's go, son. Come on now. Let's go. That was not long on the cut bait, dude. That ain't a giant catfish by any means. But that's still a decent catfish, dude. Get us started here. Come here. Come here, son. Oh yeah, right on the cut bait, dude. Look at that puppy. Oh yeah, look listen to him. Well, there we go, guys. That is the first catfish, and he got my hook pretty far. I'm actually thinking I might have to. I don't know if I want to try to go way down in there, just cut him off. I mean, it's so far in his goal. We had to cut that hook off, but that is our first catfish, boys. Not a bad deal. There was definitely something playing with it a second ago. And I saw that line kind of moving out. It was getting tight. And I go back over and I see that whole rod just slumped over, dude. I cannot go out of this challenge empty-handed. I refuse the skunk. Oh, oh, hello. We caught a crab in our cast net. Oh, no, you, no, you do not get to go. No, sir. Come here, a little blue crab. I think it's a little baby blue crab. Oh, yeah, that's cash money. That is cash money. I'll show y'all how I rigged this really quick. Just through like the back corner of his body. Seems like he's still kicking around. Should be good. That was a good catfish to start, but that is not what we want. We want a big old 20 pounder straight up monster and we've caught them before out here so they live they live here we just got to get the right one to bite we're gonna grab this piece right here this is the head and everything son i feel like the head piece and the body piece is by far the best the tail piece you'll still get bites on just not as good you want the smelliest stuff for these cats all right let's cast her back down we're gonna go right over here so that's where I started that cast. I'm telling you, and I leave my pole here. That that thing moved it to right there. I picked up, nothing was there. And I just happened to see him going. All right, we're just gonna let that hit the bottom. We're gonna do the same deal, man. Just set it up. We're gonna go grab our brim rod. I really wanna get a bluegill right now. I'm telling you, I feel like we could catch a big bass in this pocket. We got all this wind blowing and everything. Just looks too good to not catch a bass. Yes, yes, let's go okay guys i actually got a great bait here this is like the same thing i caught earlier but just like the proper size oh my gosh give me the min hayden's these things are gonna get slammed on that popping cork take my crab off oh my crab's still alive he just benched me ow 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 you son of a gun i can't get mad since i just stuck a hook through you but golly i thought you were done for sure enough you were still kicking and came back for vengeance hook you just like that and for mr crabs over here for that pinch you just earned yourself a trip to the bait bucket all right ants you gotta get oh my goodness there's a lot of ants there is a lot of ants in that can boy it's so weird because if i drop the biscuit dough on the ground they won't even touch it but they just want everything to do with the can they want every square inch of the biscuit dough inside of it oh we gotta we gotta we gotta bite too let's go boy come on oh that's a bigger one that's a bigger one right there son oh let's go baby come on come on oh it was that <laughs> yo that was a large catfish i'm telling you that one right there was every bit of six seven pounds plus that sucks i want you guys to notice what did that fish bite man he bit the head piece he bit the head piece and we're gonna throw another one right down there that was a freaking nice one he felt big and i saw him flash at the last second i didn't even know there was that big a catfish in this little section here i've actually never catfished this dock just knew it was deep right here it's the time of day i get a little delusional been out in the sun grinding for these bites and just nothing going my way absolutely nothing except i just caught something is that a redfish oh i caught a redfish in the gas net <laughs> i've got so many species but um your boy has caught them all in the cast net <laughs> this is just a small one and not in the way that we'd like to catch them but that ladies and gentlemen it's a South Carolina redfish. We're gonna get a nice little gentle release on you because we like you. 
You're kind of cute. Thank you for getting my net. <laughs> Dude, I expect an absolute tank on that headpiece right there, son. That's not even the big bluegill, though. We got one more. So we have a couple more cut baits, and then we have one more bluegill in there. I'm telling you, that last bluegill, that big old juicy piece over there, that's going to catch a monster. Oh my gosh, we're getting hammered. We just got absolutely slammed. You're not on there. All right, we need to give it a second. Dude, I saw that. I know you guys saw it. Guys, I do not know what species of fish this is. Let me know down in the comments below, but we are gonna throw it on the old Carolina rig. Here goes nothing. This one feels like I could actually get the hook in there a little bit better. So hopefully she just doesn't just get launched into the abyss. All right, screw it boys. You know, we were gonna use this for a live bluegill, but I'm at the point now where I just don't even care. I wanna catch a 20 pound monster cat. And instead of dropping this piece of cut bait right down, how we're fishing with the other one, we're actually gonna cast it out in the middle. Just like that. We're gonna let it sink on the bottom. This is the move, boys. I didn't even notice this chair was here, man. He's gonna sit back, relax, watch our fishing rods, and hopefully catch a big fish. Well, y'all, I just finally caught the perfect size little pinfish to rig up. So we are going to do just that right through the nostril. Oh, baby. We're gonna get one now. Hold on, boys. This line got way too tight. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, sp he just spit it out. But he's running with it. Oh, my God. They're, they're on both rods. Oh, my gosh. I got a giant. And there's one on this rod, too. Dude, he got me stuck. No way. Okay. Hold on. Oh. Oh. No way, dude. We just got hit on that rod. And then this one literally took us all the way over there. Somehow I wasn't paying attention. I mean, I just didn't see it. I didn't see this line move at all. I just saw it get tight and the fish was already on the other side. Maybe I just got to close the reel. I had it open and that just totally spooked me, dude. Totally fooled me. Uh, I think one slink. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, it's a monster cat, dude. Come here. Where'd my other rod go? Did I drop my other rod in the wall? What did I do, bro? No way. Hold on. What a, what a mess. No. I got to get this thing off really quick, dude. Let's see if I can find my rod. I'm a mess right now, dude. That's a good cat. But that was not worth losing a rod, dude. Nice cat, though, boys. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, that puppy's gone. Oh, man. That sucks. Oh, guys, I feel the rod. I feel the rod. I think I got it. I literally got the rod. I got the rod, I got the rod, I got the rod. Come here, boy, let's go! <laughs>